Hi, three and four year old leaders. We're preparing for July 7th. Happy 4th of July week. Um, this week, we are looking at a story called David Showed Mercy. Last week, we talked about how David was anointed and David was chosen by Samuel, God, to be king over Israel. But Saul is still king. And while Saul is still king, um, he sees David and is rather jealous of the attention he gets, of his leadership. And obviously, since God wasn't pleased with um, Saul, he was beginning to see that there was going to be a new guy in town, and he wasn't really happy about that. And so Saul did some things to, to hurt David. He actually wanted to kill him. So David and um, some other men, about 400, um, followed him out into the wilderness to escape Saul's threats and um, attempts at killing David. And while they're out there, there's one day that Saul is out in um I guess, looking for David, and um, he walks into a cave to go to the bathroom. And while he's in there, David and some of the guys that are with him are in the cave with him. And so David has an opportunity to take um, action and to, to eliminate Saul. But he doesn't do that. He gets close to him, tells his men to stay away from him, and he is able to get a piece of his cloak. And um, later on, he finds Saul and confronts Saul, and he's actually very um, honoring to Saul. He calls him um, my lord, the king, and he shows him that he had that he has a piece of his cloak and that he had every opportunity to, um, to, to attack him or kill him or everything else, but he did not. And in fact, this is what David says to him. I have done nothing against you, David said. God might punish you, but I will never harm you. Let God decide who is right and who is wrong. May he protect me from you. And when Saul heard these words, he cried, you are more righteous than I, because you have done what is good to me, though I have done what is evil to you. Most people would kill an enemy, but you have let me go. May God reward you for your kindness. And so Saul realized that God was with David and that he knew that David was going to be king over Israel. This is such a great story to show us a couple things. First off, that um, we don't have to do evil back to people, even though at times they do that to us. Because remember, God's looking at our heart. And so we don't have to take revenge. God's going to take care of somebody's evil thoughts or evil um, ideas or even their evil practices. He's going to take care of that. We can trust God, but also we can trust that God's plan is so much bigger than what we can see. David was trusting God to take care of Saul and judge Saul and to help Saul see. So even in a moment where David was scared for his life and could have hurt Saul, he decided to look to God and to show God, show Saul that he was looking to God, which helped Saul see that God could be um, who's helping direct David, that it's not David being evil towards Saul, that God's taking all of those steps. Not only that, that God had a plan much bigger than even David or Saul was going to be. That King Jesus, King Savior Jesus, was going to be what we actually needed. Well, it's a great story today to help us um, see how, um, how God's plans are so much better than what we think needs to happen Um for good, for evil, in all of those circumstances. God's plans are so much better if we will just sit and relax and wait on God to reveal what he's doing in front of us. And some of us may never get to see that. I don't know that Saul totally got to see um, the kind of king that David became, 
or how his how Israel grew, um, but we can still trust God in the middle of all of that. All right. So your um, social activity. One more week, you're going to play find your match game. Um, and this game is where you call out a category. Uh, this week, maybe you want to do um, favorite flavor of ice cream. Everybody who loves chocolate, come stand over here. Everybody who loves um, manganadas, come stand over here. Everybody who loves um Popsicles, come stand over here. So do you decide on what the categories are? This is to help kids see um, the different things that make us who we are. And obviously, as we're looking at how God is shaping David, it helps us see that um, sometimes some of the things and some of our preferences and some things about us could help prepare us for bigger things in life as well. Your um, small group activity today, kids are going to get the chance to make their own crown. And our crown is to help us remember that King David was a good king. But who are we waiting for? We are waiting for Savior King Jesus. And so they're going to get their own crown to decorate. You have some crowns. You also have some stickers that the kids can put on the crowns. Um, you can get your markers or your crayons out if you'd like to for kids to decorate their crowns. And of course, they can take their crowns home. To remember that um, kings wear crowns and Saul was not a perfect king. David was not a perfect king either. Jesus is the perfect king. Jesus perfectly rules over everything because he is God. Is anything or anyone greater than God? No, God is greater than anything. And in fact, that points us to our memory verse for this series. It says, no one is like you, Lord. You are great and your name is mighty in power. Jeremiah 10, 6. And your signs for that is no one is like you, Lord. You are great and your name is mighty in power. Then you can pray with your kids and um, help the kids get their crowns on their heads so they can take them home and show them off to their families. Thank you so much for leading. If you have some friends ready to come join you in serving, we could use their help, especially with greeters at the doors, at the front doors as people are coming in, in the parking lot. I would love to have some over on the children's side in the parking lot. Um, We'd love to have them at each door as kids are walking in and out, especially walking out because of some custody issues we know of. Those will be on the tags, um, so you will know that. Um, and also, um, we need some check-in people. Each weekend, we are averaging about five or six new families, and a new family doesn't usually just bring one kid. They usually bring four or five kids with them, and so we could use extra hands. Standing in line and waiting um, to get your kids in a group for the very first time is really challenging for new families, so we would love to have some extra hands with our check-in team. They do a fabulous job. They just need some extra help to make that happen. And then also in all of our groups, we could use extra hands to help us lead kids to build relationships that build disciples. Let me know if you know those people, invite them to come serve with you one week, and then we'll get them connected to get their background check and all the other information that they need. Have a great week, and thank you for building relationships that build disciples.